What is up everybody? It is GCR Productions here and welcome back to let's say an informational video. Now I know what you're thinking this may look like a crossing tour but it kind of is but it's pretty much an explanation tour on how the railroad crossings work. So yeah most of y'all rail fans by now should know about the Wyandotte Michigan quad track crossings that are owned by three different lines two CN lines and one Norfolk Southern line or technically it's classified as Conrail but I know what you guys are maybe thinking about thinking to yourself Itself. Well, how do these railroad crossings work? Now, all of these different like signals have their own orientation, you know, wiring orientation to mark on which kind of, you know, which train is going on each track and what signals activate for what train. And yeah, and today I'm gonna expl explain the uh, proper orientation for these crossings is wiring. So if you guys are wondering how this, these crossings work, well, I am here to explain for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So first up right here, you have the CN Flat Rock subdivision. Nothing much, it's pretty simple. A lot of locals go through this line. And now uh, when the train goes on a, uh, the CN Flat Rock subdivision, this gated signal always activates no matter what. All This uh, gated signal always activates no matter what track the train is on. But the part you need to know about this is the fact that the back lights are actually wired differently. Now, let me explain. So if a train is going on the uh, flat C and Flat Rock subdivision, this gated signal's back lights will activate. This entire signal will be turned on. And same goes with this mass signal right here. The bells will ring, both the pairs of lights will be on, and, and you know, pretty much the entire time while the train is going through. But now here's the twist. Over here, you had the two tracks on the C on the Conrail Shoreline sub Detroit Shoreline. Now, when a train goes through here, this car, the gated signal does activate, but the back lights will be shut off. And same goes with this signal, the mass signal over here. The back lights will be on, but the front lights will be off, but the bell will be ringing. So, yeah, that's what happens when the uh, Conrail train goes through here or on any other line, pretty much. But when a Conrail train goes through here, these two mass signals will activate. The entire signals will activate while these over here remain shut off. And, yeah, pretty much just the entire way through. Now, like now, uh, if you guys you know uh, haven't recollected already, I'm going. I'm actually using the Vinewood Avenue crossing as an example, although it ain't a perfect example because some of the signals here are not wired correctly. But uh, I just wanted you know a prime example because this was mostly wired correctly. Unlike Ford Avenue, Ford Avenue is actually wired completely correctly, which is pretty neat. Like all the signals, you know, function exactly how they have to, or you know, should be should be activating how they should. Anyway, start, sorry about that. But yeah, obviously when this goes through, these two activate, but I'll say, so the, so these, so do these though, because uh, like I said, backlights on the gated signal, signal will be continued, will be shut off. And same thing with the front lights on this mass signal over here will also be shut off. But the front light, but, but the backlights on the mass signal will be flashing and the front lights on the, on the gated signal will be flashing and both bells will be ringing. And yeah. Same story goes for over here. Like I said, um, these two crossings will activate, or these two signals will activate when a Conrail train or a Norfolk Southern train is going through the second track. And once again, the same old thing, the front lights will be shut off here and the back lights will be shut off over there on the CN track gated signals. And yeah, pretty much the entire way through. So yeah, now let's go ahead and explain what happens on the other side. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, pretty much the same exact thing happens on the other side, which honestly it does. So when I, so this right here is the CN Shoreline subdivision. Actually, wait, whoops, I got that backwards. I am so sorry. This right here is the Flat Rock subdivision that a lot of good locals go through. And over there is the Shoreline subdivision. I'm, I apologize, that was a completely, I got it completely backwards. So this is the Flat Rock subdivision and over there is the Shoreline, CN Shoreline subdivision. But yeah, pretty much just the same thing happens when a train is going through the Flat Rock subdivision. These two signals will, the entire signals of these two will activate and you know, the gates will go down, the lights will be, all the lights will be flashing, both bells will be ringing. But down here, these two signals, once again, will remain shut off. Well, actually the front lights will on that mass signal and the back lights on that gated signal will remain shut off, but the bells will be ringing though. So yeah, that's pretty much what happens when a train goes through here. And same goes with, same goes with these signals too. The front lights on this mass signal will be shut off and, and the back lights will be shut off on this signal, but the bells will be ringing in the back lights here and those front lights will be flashing when a train goes on any other of these tracks, other, any of these tracks other than this one. So yeah. That's pretty much my simplified explanation of how these wind dot crossings work. Now let me go ahead and verbally explain to you how you know um, some of these crossings are incorrectly wired. So let's go ahead and you know break that down real quick. 
So first example, just like the old classic Oak Street, which is actually right down there. So how Oak Street is wired, it's very incorrect. So these two, well, these two signals are wired correctly, where the back lights and these front lights will be shut off. But but no matter what happens, all four of these Conrail signals will activate, no matter what. Like all the lights will be on, all the bells will be ringing. It's like absolute chaos. But yeah, the, all the Conrail signals will be activated, no matter if a CN train or a Con, or a Norfolk Southern is going through either of these lines. Yeah, that is like the majorly uh, incorrect wiring. But the other signals will be, you know, uh, activated in the correct orientation where the lights are shut off in certain places but yeah that's my example of like you know majorly incorrect wiring both um sibley road which is way down towards the uh uh no wait, no that's saliat road i forgot where sibley road is but yeah sibley road and oak street are like that but now let me show you examples of like minorly incorrectly wiring so sometimes in some cases when the signals have been recently replaced you know when the original ones have just been replaced uh when a train doesn't go through like the let's for example the cn shoreline subdivision let's say a norfolk southern is going through the you know conrail detroit line um sometimes um in some crossings i think goddard road antoine street are like this and i think this crossing is like that too vinewood's vinewood avenue now these sometimes this these uh cn newer cn mass signals will have all of their lights flashing which is incorrect because because these uh front ones are supposed to be shut off when a train is not on that track but yet sometimes they do you know uh flash when a train is not on you know the track that it's supposed to be flashing on for say like i think you guys may get it right now like the sometimes you know or in some crossings a train will go through any other track other than let's say the cn shoreline sub and these front lights will be flashing which is incorrect but uh, oh well, sometimes uh, they can't really cope perfectly with the wiring always when they're replacing these signals, so yeah. And another weird uh, example is, like I said, I may have explained this already in my Visker Road Railroad Crossing Tour, is sometimes that this, when this crossing, when a, when a train goes through any other tracks, other than, for example, the CN Shoreline subdivision track, this uh, mass signal will not activate at all. It would be completely shut off. Like, uh, no lights will be flashing, the bells would not be ringing. That's what we call wired the lights to the bell, because, you know, nothing happens when a train goes to any other, other these tracks other than this track. You know, it'll just uh, it'll just say sit there and just say absolutely nothing until a train comes and then when the train comes on this track you know the whole signal will activate and there's also happened some weird cases that are completely unrelated to like you know the uh, series circuit that these crossings run on is sometimes that the uh bell will stop ringing right as the gate starts to go up yep and sometimes that happens too you know i mean hell that happens a lot on the cn flint subdivision where i rail fan but uh and sometimes the lights will shut off like way before the gate goes up or something you know that i to me that's completely unrelated to the uh uh series circuit situation and also here's another example speaking of gates going up sometimes when this mass as i explained when this mass signal is wired incorrectly you could see that the front lights are flashing when they're not supposed to when like a train is going on one of these three other three other tracks is sometimes that these front lights will flash only when the gate is going up which is really weird like they would be shut off the whole time but then the front lights will come on when the gates are going up yeah which is pretty wonky but once again oh well they probably got to cope with something else to make the wiring work and also, last but not least, here's another example that I wanted to give out is the fact that sometimes these have flasher relay flaws. Like, for example, on Antoine Street, the mass signal and the gated signal on the Flat Rock subdivision, I think the Flat Rock subdivision, would have, you know, their... Uh, uh, flasher relays completely separate like sometimes this would start flashing on the left light and this will start flashing on the right light and they would just be ping-ponging back and forth it kind of looks cool like this gateless signals on center road are like that but uh in some cases you know in some cases on some of these crossings are pretty much like that they just like to ping pong back and forth but yeah that's pretty much my simplified explanation on how these crossings work like i said they just they just activate for you know each different track that they're that they on you know, each bell rings separately, each lights flash separately. It just really depends as you may think about it. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that little, you know, breakdown explanation video. If you guys want to check out some more modern Wyandot rail fitting videos, go check out Caleb Belcher's channel. So last time I was here, I actually met him. And yeah, he's a pretty cool dude. And he makes tons of videos on these modernized, you know, uh, Wyandot crossings. So make sure to check out his channel. He has his own explanation video too. This was just my take. But for now, I hope you guys have enjoyed that little breakdown explanation video of me using the Vinewood Avenue crossing as an example. If you did, smash that like button for more information. 
informational videos. And yeah, once again, this is GCR Productions signing off.